It's amazing that you're running for Congress. What made you decide to run for Congress? Well, two things. One, uh, I, I looked at this district and I looked at the representation that we've had and the people of this district have not had working class representation for over a decade. That's the first reason. Uh, the second reason is I got calls from friends of mine in the state legislature and people that live here locally and asked me to do it. So, you know, I talked to my family about it, talked to some folks in the party, and we thought it was the right time to take on Alma Adams. Nice, man. I wish you well with that. And so you, you are uh, representing the Republican Party, right? Yes, sir. Nice. I, um, how is that going for you as a black Republican? So the, the interesting thing is people tend to think we're unicorns and that there's yeah. not a whole lot of black Republicans. But the fact of the matter is, in North Carolina, we have a very robust black Republican movement. I had the opportunity to actually chair the NCGOP's Black Conservative Voices Coalition. So the party is really taking black engagement seriously. Uh, we just did a bus tour, Black Voters for Trump. Um, we had a bunch of black folks show up in support and a lot of black men show up in support. Now, let's be real, Jesse. There's people with stupid ideas about race on both sides of yeah, the aisle. Yeah. So we have come across some people that, you know, oh, his name is a duel. He shouldn't be a Republican. We've, we've come across <laughs> that. But the way that I've dealt with that is by becoming a leader in the party. Right on, man. I was going to ask you about your name. A duel, Ali, is that like a Allah U Abba name? Kind of, kind of. And so, so how did you get it, that name? So my mom was 14 when she had my twin brother and I, when she was pregnant with my brother and I. My grandfather, who has passed away, uh, was a heroin addict. And while she was pregnant with us, he was getting clean. And, you know, as people tend to get religious as they get clean, he was yeah. reading the Bible. And he got to the verse where Jesus said, Illa, illa, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, Jesse, that language is called Aramaic. The granddaughter wow. language of that language is Arabic. So my grandfather wanted to give my brother and I names that would be in a language Jesus would recognize should he return in our lifetime. If we became Christians or if we became Muslims, he didn't know. He wanted us to have a proper name. But my name means servant of the Most High God. And as a Christian, I believe that's what I'm doing every single day by running for office and serving my community. Amazing. So you and your brother, are you identical twins? Identical twins. Uh, we have a platform called the Urban Conservative. We do it together. Uh, oh. He does what I do, but he just does that out on Long Island where he lives in New York. That's amazing, man. And so what's important to you? Oh, man. Uh, so first and foremost, you know, I'm going to be a little selfish in that answer. And that is I want my city. I want my district. I want my state to be the best it could possibly be. I want this country to be the best it could possibly be. I want my children to be proud of me and the things that I accomplish. So that's a little selfish. But from a perspective of running as a candidate, we have to do better with our education system. Our children are graduating high schools functionally illiterate. A lot of your audience, I don't need to rehash what the problem is there. Charlotte, as a major city, only ranks 38 out of 50 for upward economic mobility. So there's a high likelihood that if you're born poor in this city, you're going to stay that way. And as a small business owner, somebody who's a working class guy, I have some ideas about how to fix that. And last but not least, Jesse, the real big thing is prioritizing the safety of our community and not just by securing the southern border, by, but ensuring that law enforcement has what they need to keep our streets safe. Yeah. Our homicide rate in Charlotte is out of control right now. Everywhere, and we need to man. Do something about it. It's everywhere. It's amazing. How are you being received out there campaigning now? <clears throat> and, and you're absolutely right in what you're saying. How are people accepting this? What's the response you're getting? So we've got some good responses. You know, a lot of people on the left get upset. Mainly, you know, white women are really mad at me. Uh, clearly, you know, you don't know your struggle. You don't know yeah. your people. And I'm like, okay, you don't know what I've been through. Um, but I've done a very non-traditional Republican campaign. I've gone to black churches. I've, I've done a smoke shop tour where we've gone around to the different cannabis shops and met people where they are. We go out every weekend and we meet people in the community and, and we go to black owned businesses. Um, folks are ready for a change in this district, but there is a, a, an older black female <laughs> that does not like what I'm talking about. And that will, 
cuss me out and get mad. Um, and then there's what I call the runaway slave mentality, you know, that people are stuck on that Democrat Party plantation. And they're like, you know, who, who you who's going to run against her? What you doing that for? And I'm like, bro, it's 2024. Get off the plantation. Yeah. What has this lady done for you? <clears throat> Absolutely, man. And so tell the people why they should vote for you. Well, two reasons. One, because it's time the people of Charlotte had a representative that is actually going to listen, be present, and has skin in the game in this district. My family is from here. My children are born and raised in this community. I live and work here, number one. Number two, I'm running against a career politician who has been in Congress for a decade and in government over 35 years. I'm not trying to sound ageist, but this woman is 78 years old and she has no idea what the common folk are going through these days. Yeah. If you want somebody that knows what it's like to have to run a business that's working hard to put food on the table and that's willing to have a term limit, which is something that I, I've signed up on, um, then I'm your guy. I'm running to do three things. I, I do not have on the rose colored glasses glasses, Jesse, of going to D.C. and changing D.C., but I can change what's happening in my district, yeah. and I want to focus on improving our early childhood education, our upward economic mobility, and making sure that we're keeping our families safe here in Charlotte. So will you be debating this woman? She will. She has never debated a congressional opponent. Wow. Um, I've been calling her out. She refuses to debate a, a congressional opponent. Um, and I think that's because she does not want to be held to task for her voting record. I think that she feels entitled to the seat. Um, and I've had one interaction with her where she was very rude. Um, and so, you know, at the end of the day, I, I I will tell people if she's not willing to debate, that's because she doesn't want to be held to task for her record, and she doesn't think she owes it to the people of this district to put the i the you know the contest of ideas in front of them. And the fact that she doesn't want to debate it shows that she's afraid of you anyway. She doesn't want the the uh, the voters to see both sides because if she thought she was right, she would be willing to debate you. Correct. That's what I think. <laughs> What a mess. <laughs>